Boys and girls, this is the story, Touch the Sky, Alice Coachman, Olympic High Jumper, by Anne Malaspina, illustrations by Eric Velasquez. Alice Coachman raced, down the dirt road, bare feet flying, long legs spinning, braids flapping in the wind. Leap! She sailed over a tree branch and kept on running. Back home, Papa was angry. Bare feet shouldn't fly, long legs shouldn't spin, braids shouldn't flap in the wind. Sit on the porch and be a lady, Papa scolded Alice. Mama, who worked from morning till night, gave her chores, cooking breakfast, picking cotton, gathering plums and pecans to make ends meet. Hard times had come to Albany, Georgia in the 1930s. There was always more work to do. At school, when the bell rang for recess, Alice burst outside to play basketball with the boys. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Alice wanted to touch the sky. Alice's teacher saw something special in that never-sit-still girl. She took her to a track meet where a boy leaped over a crossbar into a pile of sawdust. Inch by inch, the bar rose higher. Inch by inch, the boy jumped higher too. The high jump, someone said. Alice's feet tingle, one in to try. Fields shut, tracks shut, doors shut to girls like Alice. No place to practice, no crossbar to race. Alice and her friends got busy, knotting racks, tying racks to sticks, planting sticks in the red Georgia clay. Then her friends stood back and let Alice jump. One day, a man came by to collect the rent. He saw Alice, bare feet flying, long legs spinning, braids flapping in the yard. Evelyn, that gal's gonna jump over the moon one of these days, he said to Mama. The moon was so far from Albany, where Mama saved pennies because there's, there weren't ever enough. But a dream is a beginning, and as Alice grew older, her dream was to soar. Good news! The high school coach needed a jumper, a high-flying, star-grabbing, bar-crossing jumper, for a trip to the Tuskegee Relays in Alabama. Alice's teachers bought her shoes to run in, shorts and bright white socks. If she was going to touch the sky, she needed all that. Her heart raced when she saw them, the sprinters, javelin throwers, distance runners, the finest young black athletes in all the South. The referee called her name, and Alice got ready. God said, go, up, up, up. Over the crossbar, she flew. Inch by inch, the bar rose higher. Inch by inch, Alice jumped higher, too. When she won first place, Coach Cleve Abbott asked her to join his famous team, the Tuskegee Golden Tigerettes, for one meet, the biggest meet of the year. September 3rd, 1939, the American Athletic Union National Championship, Waterbury, Connecticut. Stretching her long legs, Alice sucked on a sour lemon. The lemon made her feel light and fast, feather light, moon jumping strong. That day, Alice won her first national medal. When Alice got back to Albany, Papa was proud, but he wanted her home. Mama admired her medal, but warned her to stay humble. One day, Coach Abbott came by to invite her to enroll at Tuskegee. Papa said no. Alice held her breath. No more picking cotton, 
No more gathering plums and pecans. Best of all, she trimmed with the tigerettes. Finally, Papa nodded. Yes, he had to let her go. At the Skiggy Institute High School, Alice practiced her jumps and studied hard to pay her fees. Alice sewed, mopped the gym, and rolled the tennis courts. Always, she thought about Mama, working so hard so Alice could rise high. Traveling wasn't easy for the Golden Tigerettes. White's only restaurant shut, restroom shut, to girls like them. They ate supper on the roadside. After dark, they hurried on. Together, the team held strong, laughing, teasing, having fun. When they got to the meets, all that mattered was sprinting, throwing, running, jumping. No one jumped higher than Alice, national champion, shining star. Still, Alice's feet tingled. One dream hung in the sky. She won an Olympic medal, but World War II was raging and the games were canceled. After peace came in 1945, Alice wondered, was she still the best or had her time passed by? July 1948, the Olympic trials, Providence, Rhode Island. Alice stood at the high jump pit. Her back hurt, one last jump. Her legs were sore. The most important jump so far. One jump to make the Olympic team. She sucked on a lemon and took off. Bare feet flying, long legs spinning in the wind. Alice scaled the bar at five feet, four and three quarter inches. An Olympic trials record. A week later, Alice sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, an official member of the U.S. Olympic Women's Track and Field Team. July 29, 1948, Wembley Stadium, London. King George VI of England stood to speak. I proclaim open the Olympic Games of London. Trumpets sounded. The Olympic flag was raised and cannons thundered. In the field, Alice paraded with her team and 4,000 athletes from 59 countries. Flags waving, flame burning, pigeons flying into the blue. The Olympics had begun. And Alice's dream was almost, almost here. The game sped by. No gold medals for Alice's team so far. The high jump was the last event. Glory was up to her. Alice squeezed a lemon. She stretched her long legs and touched her toes. The lemon and God's will give me luck, she said to herself. That's all I need. Inch by inch, the bar rose higher. Nineteen women took their turns. Inch by inch, Alice jumped higher, too. Finally, only two were left. England's champion, Dorothy Tyler, and Alice. Albany star, it was Alice's turn. The crowd held its breath. Up, 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 over the crossbar she flew, setting a new Olympic record of 5 feet, 6 and 1 eight inches. Dorothy took two jumps to clear the same height, putting Alice ahead. When they both missed the next jump, the contest was over. Alice had won the gold. As she climbed to the top of the winner's stand, the crowd rose for the bare feet flying, long legs spinning, moon jumper from Georgia. Alice had finally touched the sky. Here are some photographs when Alice was a young athlete back in her days. and her Olympic gold medal.